All right, good morning and welcome to today's stock market update. Wow, what a day yesterday. The S&P 500 was down almost 2% and the Nasdaq is down more than 3.3%, the worst one day loss since February last year. So what happened? Well, the Fed meeting minutes, so we'll talk about this. And uh, all tech stocks got hammered. We'll take a look at Netflix, Google, Meta platforms, which is basically Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Apple. There's also Bloodbath for GameStop, AMC, Rivian. So we'll talk about this and much, much more. So today is Thursday, January 6th. And if this is your first time here, hi, I'm Marcus Heidkotter. And this over there is my head coach, Mark Hart. Now, together, we have more than 47 years of trading, trading experience. And, and every morning, we sift through a mountain of news websites, newsletters, and reports. And then we take the most important news and go live right here to share with you what do you need to know as you head into your trading day? <laughs> now, if you're new here, I know it can be overwhelming. Don't worry, we have a special video just for you that I will link to in the description. That's a great place to get started. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look of what happened yesterday in the markets. We don't need to look at the Dow. Let's just start with the, with the S&P 500 here. So this is where down almost 2% mark. It was a nasty day, Marcus, and I think that the five minute chart really shows exactly what was going on because stocks were kind of sideways for most of the day. And then you see this real sharp decline and it was just uh, it was just a puke into the clothes. <laughs> it was not <laughs> pretty and just a waterfall down finishing at session lows. That's all because of the Fed, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But we could also look at the Nasdaq, Marcus. And yeah, I'm looking at like a daily chart because uh, this is where we see what, what was happening there. I mean, huge, huge slide. Exactly. And you mentioned that it was the biggest loss since February. Uh, so biggest drop for the Nasdaq since February 2021. Yeah. So so let's talk about the Fed. Right? So so what happened here in the Fed meeting minutes? This was from the uh, Fed meeting that we had in December. And uh, during the meeting minutes, we, we always uh, see, OK, how were they discussion? What were they thinking? What was going on in, behind these cl uh, in this closed door meetings? And I mean, the first thing is that they say, you know what, we, we believe we are close to full employment uh, here in the US. So they want to tackle inflation. And we talked about it yesterday, right? I mean, we had the Jolts jobs opening report where there's around 10 million open jobs and there's uh, 6 million or 6.5 million people uh, looking for jobs. So unemployment rate is around uh, 4%. And, and this is where they say, okay, let's actually tackle inflation. And, and we know that that is a concern and we know that that is something that is a concern uh, for both the Fed and the markets and Fed policy and how they tackle it is potentially going to hurt stocks and growth stocks in, in particular, right? So, so that's you know already on the table. But just the idea that okay, the employment picture is great, inflation is what we need to focus on. Then they start to have these tools to to tackle inflation that are not you know conducive to a big bull market where stocks are just you know skyrocketing. Right. And so, so let's talk about this. So first of all, they're unwinding their bond buying program. This, this is the massive program where they were buying billions of, uh, of bonds and mortgage backed securities every month. And they already said that in November. And now they say, you know what, we want to be done with this by March. And, and this is where it gets super interesting. So I'm looking here at the uh, CME Group's uh, Fed Market Watch tool, because uh, this shows us what market participants are factoring in. So in this where, okay, in the January meeting that's on January 26th, nobody expects them to raise interest rates. But here comes the shocker. In May, uh, in March, in March actually, now 67.5% uh, is already factored into the market that they will raise interest. And that's, I mean, this, this timeline is moving up. Exactly. And, you know, over the last couple of months, it was July being the first rate hike, and then it moved to June and then May. And so it's creeping up. And I, I think that the, the March meeting, that that's realistic, that the traders are making a realistic bet on, you know, the Fed funds futures are pointing to the most likely rate hike being in March and, and that being accurate. But right. Marcus, you know, the big concern here 
because the the rate hike, the bond tapering, those two things were already kind of priced into the market. I mean, that, that's what the Fed said with their statement. But it seems like the there's this third wild card that that got tossed on the table, and, and that is the balance sheet, right? And the bond balance sheet, this is something, you know, the, the Fed owns uh, bonds and notes. And going back to 2017 to 2019, they were starting to reduce that balance sheet. And even uh, President Trump at the time was getting, you know, upset at the Fed because he thought it wasn't a good idea. Um, but that kind of got put on hold. That's really been on the back burner. And from at least what I saw, that was the, the real catalyst yesterday because they, said that they're tackling that as well, most likely after the first uh, rate hike. And now you have this other element where the Fed's just kind of going full steam into let's really do something about inflation. Yeah, and uh, so, I mean, we can explain this this balance sheet reduction here over the next 10 minutes. And uh, But long story short, here's the deal, right? When the Fed was buying bonds, they were pumping money into the market now, when they're unwinding their balance sheet, they're basically taking money out of the market. And this is a long story short. So while stocks love the idea that the Fed provided liquidity by buying it, now they don't like the idea that the Fed is taking money out of the markets or liquidity here out of the markets. And this is what we saw here. So, uh, I mean, let's take a look at uh, we, we got to look at the 10 year notes because, I mean, they were just skyrocketing higher over the past few days because, I mean, that's also uh, very obvious yesterday in the meeting minutes. They said we will raise interest rates three times next year. And then in 2023, we will rate it, or raise them another three times. And then in 2024, another two times. So, I mean, even though this is not set in stone, this is just the meeting minutes. This is what they are talking about. I mean, this timeline has moved up. A few months ago, we were talking about the Fed was saying, oh, yeah, you know what? We are not raising interest rates until 2023. And then it was maybe towards the end of 2022. And then in November, we, we got this, this uh, U-turn from uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed here, uh, who now basically says, all right, we got to tackle inflation. And here's how we're going to do this. So, uh, yeah, interest rates are rising. And that's not good for the market, especially not for the growth stocks, right? Exactly. Bottom line, free or cheap money, that era is coming to an end. <laughs> right. So this is where yesterday, I mean, even the, the big tech stocks were down. Netflix down 4%. Uh, if you look at, uh, at Google here, Alphabet down 4.5%. Uh, we have Facebook, which is now meta platforms, uh, down 3.6%. I mean, all of them yesterday down. And I mean, these are the, the big names. I mean, these, these are the names who really don't need that much money to borrow. I, I mean, we, we're talking about growth stocks. These are not really growth stocks, but they're tech stocks. And I mean, tech stocks were just hurt yesterday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take a look at a few others here. Uh, I mean, because some of them got really, really hit hard. Uh, I mean, so Salesforce yesterday, CRM uh, down, what, 8%. Uh, Salesforce can catch a break here. Yeah, and so this was just kind of a, you know, a, a confluence of events because there was also uh, a downgrade. So UBS downgraded Salesforce. So between the, the Fed and then also the downgrade, you see that there is the gap lower and then it just continued to drop and finished its session lows. Yeah. And and then, I mean, also in, in all of this, uh, the cryptocurrencies got caught up as well. I mean, so Bitcoin yesterday uh, dropping below the $45,000 level. And this is where uh, Bitcoin was basically trapped between 45000 and 50000 So yesterday dropping down, now trading at 43000 uh, in overnight session, trading as low as 42000 uh, 200 approximately. So, um, yeah, breaking down here. Same with Ethereum. And and with Bitcoin, I know you just uh, switched to, or no, you're on Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, we were talking about the 50,000 mark and, you know, being in this range between 46 and 52. Uh, it, now you look at, watch out for the 40,000 mark. <laughs> this <laughs> might just drift on down to 40. And, you know, sometimes these, these, you know, markets, they like round numbers and, and there's, we're drawn to these whole numbers. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if this 
came back a little bit more. Yeah, and and then we also have uh, stocks like like GameStop, who yesterday were down, uh, or they were down thirteen percent, bouncing back a little bit here this morning. AMC uh, being down ten uh, percent, and then Bad Bath and Beyond, another meme stock, uh, down ten percent, uh, but ticking higher here in pre market trading, uh, almost making up everything that they lost yesterday. Yeah, interesting. So with BBY, BBBY, they did report earnings. And they had, um, what was that? That was pre-market, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, they reported a, a loss uh, for the quarter uh, and uh, analysts, were, they expected a break-even result and they reported a loss, so that was unexpected. Uh, revenue was also below estimates and the company said a lack of inventory due to supply chain bottlenecks, go figure. Cost yeah. Bed Bath and Beyond about a hundred million dollars. Uh, interesting to see the the big uh, comeback here, though, Marcus. Yeah, because in pre market trading, they were they were originally down. So let's yeah, see what happens. I was, What's I was confused. Here. I was wondering maybe earnings came yesterday. No, nope. uh, I thought it was. You know the so that's an earnings reaction just catching me by surprise. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, but. <sighs> What's even more important? So what's going on now? What will happen next? So is this the beginning of the end? Will we see the correction right now? Will we see the market crash that many have been talking about? So what are your thoughts here, Mark? And I think we should bring back our good old friend, the 50 day moving average. And I'm plotting it here on the S&P 500. And this is where I think this helps put things into perspective. And you see that that 50 day moving average it it has acted as support. It it is a level that that uh, traders look at and even funds pay attention to the fifty and the two hundred day moving average. So it is significant. We see that we're still above the the fifty day moving average. That that's the S and P. So this this pullback to these levels I think is healthy for the market because it gives the market an opportunity to breathe and for more money to come into the market and start buying, right? The the wild card right now, I think, is uh, tomorrow's jobs report. So right. I do believe that that could potentially, you know, if that comes out a lot better than expected, it, it could be that there's a little more downside here because traders might think, oh gosh, you know, the Fed really thinks, you know, now un or the uh, employment situation is, is exactly what the Fed said and, and full employment and even better and, and shoot, they might do things faster. Um, but I think that could be a little overreaction and, and then there could be buying opportunities because there are stocks that have been beaten up that are good solid companies. And and I, I think that uh, it, it's a buying opportunity once the dust settles, but tomorrow might be one more catalyst for a, another drop. Right, because we always got to see the markets don't like uncertainty. So now there is more certainty of what the Fed is thinking. And this is over the last few days. I mean, we know that the markets were all focused on the Omicron variant and what's happening there. Then uh, it shifted to inflation and what will the Fed do? Now we have a better idea and it's almost like pulling off the Band-Aid. Yes, it hurt because we didn't like or the markets yeah. didn't like what the Fed said. But now we know what they're planning. And as we are going into earnings season, I, I mean, probably next week we'll start kicking it off. In two weeks, it really starts kicking into full gear towards mid-January. And we see how companies did in the last quarter. I think that this is when we see the market coming back. So, yeah, we have a reaction. I'm uh, looking a little bit at pre-market uh, action here. And I'm looking at a five-minute chart of the S&P 500. Uh, so we see here that uh, pretty much... Yeah, it's a little bit like, okay, wait and see well, what's happening here. So there's not a follow through of this sell off here right now. Uh, even S&P pointing to a pretty much flat opening. NASDAQ uh, still a little bit lower because there's definitely more volatile uh, volatility there. Dow pointing to a slightly higher opening here. So, I mean, it seems after the initial shock yesterday, where as I said, we had the the worst day since February last uh, last year, so in, in 11 months, uh, that we might have a little bit of aftershocks uh, going through the market today. But then, yeah, the big one will be tomorrow's job report and what's happening there. So we'll just have to trade what we see.
Trade what we see, <laughs> not what we think. And by the way, if you would like to know how exactly we're going to do this, I'll link to a few videos right here that you can watch. And if you enjoyed this watch uh, market update, uh, tune in again tomorrow where we cover what's happening to the jobs report. And tomorrow we also want to go a little bit longer and take some of your questions. So see you there. Happy trading, everybody.